He could really if you put a gun to his head. But he has everyone catalog, everything. And you ask him, he'll tell you what it's about. And when Rebchai would mention the Peter Menach, the Zayd, the Sefer, it's a Hanenaku. It's a Hanenaku. And if you ask him, if ever something happened, I had to tell him something. All I had to tell him was, you're a Chashu, you're a Chashu, you're a Chashu. No one ever saw him down without a jacket and a hat. No one. Never. No one ever told him that you have to down with a jacket and a hat. No one ever told him you have to wear a necktie. But he wore a necktie in the summertime in camp. Why? Because Chosha the Yeshiva Bachra wear neckties. He should wear a Shabbos to go without a necktie, Lincha time, at any time. Never. <coughs> He was sick. Now you people saw the heat, this heat, going in a wheelchair, Shabbos, with a jacket and a hat. This cotton shebe chabura, this cotton shebe chorot v'ashtan, the first person is Yishimabach. That's why he had to tell me, of course, Yishimabach. He shook down pens and everything else, like it's a cotton to lot. He had handcuffs. Because there's always the to be a shiva bar and to be on the police department too. Because then you you it's traveling both worlds. And the same thing is with that. So that with CP, you got to be in CPR, hang down as you want. He's a brand new CPR. And something happened two weeks ago in the by, by the shower table when the airport he came running, I told her, I told her, what's your problem, kiddo? <laughs> what's his right hand? Imagine what he can do. This was his world. This was his world. <laughs> He wasn't shaking down anybody. He was telling him it's limited. But he used to tell me, I like you. I want to be like you. I wish I could be like you. And he was nobody's fool. He knew if somebody was making fun of him. He knew if somebody was making fun of him. He knew if somebody was making fun of him. He knew if teasing me, don't tease me. And he was in the hospital. He was a good man, I've never complained to the boss. He said, pain lately, he said, it hurts, it hurts. He said, complain, pain, hey, complain. So everybody was in a good humor. If somebody drained him a cup with too many questions, he had an answer too. He was nobody's fool. That's, that's called the Shabbat Before a, an operation, which he went through, clearly, several, they started asking all kinds of questions. They would be like, no, I'm all, no, I'm all. Why not? Because the dentist is from because the hospital mix up sometimes they take out the right kidneys, they take out the right foot, they take out the right foot, they, the right foot. they got the wrong guy, the right guy, they don't know what they're doing. So they go to the patient and mach the machine again and again, make sure everything fits. So he was tired again and again and again. What's your birthday? Tax date. You don't have to figure out that it's April 15th. Because tax date is April 15th. Or when the doctor asks him too many questions, he would say, can I ask you a question? Why, sure. Why did the chicken go underneath the truck? <laughs> <laughs> to get an oily start. He had an answer for everything. This is cotton shabachabura. This is a cotton shabachabura that seemingly doesn't know what's going on with the world, but he had a compass. There's a little correction to that story with Chaim Washer. I want to tell it to you. He had a pretty correct, but he certainly doesn't remember it from what happened. It was a total surprise to me, that whole story. I had Hanosh on my lap. And we were learning that time, Ayin and Tzadik. And Ayin and Tzadik is one of those oasis that children confuse. And Hanosh kept on saying by a Tzadik, it's an Ayin. It's an Ayin. And I told Hanosh, if you want to grow up to be a Tzadik, you should learn what a Tzadik is. And he was sitting on the floor, uninvited by the door, like he did for the rest of his life. He came to Shur. He came to join the Tafyoimi. And he would walk away. Your father's what a Mesechta. <laughs> Why? Because that's what he heard in the Shia. And if you say that, then you're Gore Hosh in the Shia. If you go to Rabbi Balthus Shia, Mokhus Chanuk, then you're Moira Mare. And if you have the, the conscious, but I should be Shabbat. I will get to that momentarily also. So he said, Tati, I also want to grow up to be at Sadiq. That was the first time I cried. <laughs> no, please mention his stems on a phone. He was unbelievable. He 
administration for the shuka. So when someone doesn't have kinder time and covet, someone's goof is low key or non existent. He had no pride, no mention, nobody's fool. And he just wanted to be like everybody. And the real Moishi, the one that I just shouldn't speak about, after he imitated everybody, he wanted to be a Yeshua lost. Someone that goes to Shia. He wanted to be someone that knows his Zaytis tired. That was the real question. So he doesn't know any problems in the world. He doesn't know what's going on in Iran. He doesn't know what's going on in Israel. So he sees somebody else who likes the person, the good person. I want to be like that. That was his whole life. When somebody loves you without any agenda, you love that person too. And that person wants one necktie, you give him three neckties. Why not? He doesn't feel good. Then you wait for him to wear that necktie, and then you wink at each other. Or a pen, or a CD, or a doctor stethoscope. It doesn't make a difference. If it moved, Moishi well, has it someplace. But it was all a compliment. I want to be like you. Why do you think it was up? So the cop is because then there's no barriers. And when someone gave him a compliment, he said, Moishi, you did a good job. So someone said, no, I changed it. Well, he's doing the job. That's right. And that's right. They give him a compliment. He agrees with you. He doesn't know anything you're posting and not supposed to. This is it. What you see is what you get. This is what's missing. A real person. A durkhan durkhan. Neshama. A neshama on a goof that's walking around on this world. These neshamas get along with everybody. They don't say, we're a Russian hour. No refuses. The Kenish can always ask us from the Hofitz Khan to Shemir Salah. Everything was not. Everything was fine. Everything was good. There's no goof, there's no ego, there's no nothing. To understand this, just now, just for a second, just like a Hosset, different Hosset, we had different low ego, different low ego, different Hosset. That was exactly it. But Moishi had many rebels. Just about everybody that knew and worked with him, that was a very covered fan. For him, he did learn Mishnais. And as Hamasha mentioned, he, he was Messiah Masech the Tome twice since his Shuas. He insisted on learning. And when it was too much, he said he didn't say enough. He said, stop here. And he would ask. And as we mentioned before, what, what, what he learned was pictures. And one of the things he knew Sef the Sukkah quite well. He would love to go through the Sukkah when they had those posters of different things and tell you, this is possible for one for this. And he asked him, you know, Sukkah, cold, cold. <laughs> or any other Sef with pictures. But he would tell me, Tati, say it inside. But if I want to say it slow. I still can't figure it out. It's only his neshama. And sometimes he tried to say the wrong with me. And the other thing which you mentioned before, you love somebody, you take most of him. Everybody in the Chabura knows. You sat down, you came in. How come you're late? Where were you last night? Let somebody else tell somebody else. Where you? When you were late, how many times? Why should you give most to anybody? And you took it. Why? He means it. He doesn't mean anything bad. He loves you. He's wearing your necktie and your pants. He took your CD. He took everything. And now he tells you no, sir. He means anything bad. And ten, ten seconds later, find something else. Yeah, I want to have that too. I like it. It's good. I want to have it. That's how he did it. Because he really likes you. He gave me Musa too. We're sitting, we're learning. And the phone rings. And this time it was something that don't answer the phone. Don't answer the phone. I'm going to have a mission. I don't want to answer the phone. I look at the picture again. It's just like a corset. He wants to wear the rabbit's clothing. That's it. For him, everybody was a rabbit. Yeah, he was always dressed up like a gentleman. He always felt important, whether he was a husband with a solo member, CPR. The apron by him. He was a waiter, he wanted to help out.
Mishnah of Sechta always says, Ava Midas, Ba'olche Beis HaMedrash. If four types of people that go to learn, Ha'olach, someone that goes, Ve'ein Ha'olche, and he doesn't produce, doesn't learn, can't learn, you'll figure it out. He goes to the next manager, he does, he goes to the next manager, more of this and that, but nothing happens beyond that. So then it's hard if he has to be that way. a person learns, person goes to this matter, she produces, he learns. What does it mean? It means that it's not the best matter. So therefore he has hard. It's hard if he has to be and that's hard to leave Hoyla the person goes and he produces. So, Pasha, we learn that there are two separate things. There's Scharalicha, and perhaps it's quantitatively how far you from the shore, the shore goes, the further shore. There's Scharalicha, regardless of what you accomplish. And then there's Schar Asir, what you did, what you accomplished. Perhaps, and I don't think it's so far to the shop, perhaps you think it's the shop. Perhaps plots like this, just like everybody understands. And the second part of the equation, Oysa. A person learns, he gets half a learning. There can be two people, there can be two halusas, there can be two magidi to anybody. And they're learning, they're learning the same material. But they have different schar. One learns with the halus. One learns by Amkus, one learns to understand it, and one more goes to the open perfunctory. And depending on the person's intelligence afterwards, maybe one knows it better than the other one, because he picks it up easy. And that's what it is. The Asiya is different. The learning is different. Everybody understands that. Perhaps I could suggest that in the Halicha it's also different. It depends how a person goes. Not where he goes, how he goes, but what does he want when he goes? What does he want? He's going just to go because he has to leave the house because everybody else is going and his wife told him to go if not to get not get himself or anything else like that. Oh, he wants to. He wants to be a god of the Torah. He wants to learn like everybody else. He wants to be like everybody else. But what should he do? He has limited intelligence. That's a heilach. And in the gestigen, everybody else, that's a heilach. His halich is not different than anybody else's halich. That's what the Mishnah says. The Madrega is in Aliche. Doesn't make a difference how many streets you passed, how many, how many miles you went. What was your attitude? What was your kavona? What did you want from your Aliche? That notebook is Moishi's Aliche. That Yavam is that hard Mesech is Moishi's Aliche. He wants to be like everybody else in the Shikh, crafting on Yavam. And I must tell you, from time to time, he did surprise. With those pictures of the Zach and I had to share in my house in, in, in Sefti Shabbos, and he came with his picture book. And sometimes we, he came across our loch and he found with the picture. And one time, there was at least one time, there was a, a footnote on the bottom which led us to a whole discussion. He found the picture. He horrified in his capacity. He was a oiloch. He was a oiloch of And perhaps he was a noise. I don't know. Whatever he did according to the capacity the boy gave, it's a oil of the oil, perhaps. And then he's a oil, I don't know. But a oil he certainly was. And then he wanted to do and do that. <sighs> we talk about what can we learn? So far, I mentioned quite a few things. He never came late. He never came late to davening. He never came late, late to learning. He never missed learning. He would give musa for those people that did miss learning. He was Mavis Sedra. I'm sure many of you remember. You can hear him. Forget about the other side of the show. You heard him across the street. But if you listen to the words, he wasn't saying any words. He couldn't read. But he was sitting there and gargle, gargle the Sedra. You know why? Because he was a oiler. He wanted to. 
Let the Rabbi Shalim and Sarah of the Oiseus. It's not his fault he can't read, but he wants to be Mava Sedra. So learn from him. Learn from him to be Mava Sedra. Learn from him to come to time of Mavali. Learn from him to wear a hat and jacket. Learn something from him. Kotna Shavates. He didn't walk around by Davani. He didn't walk out by Davani. He had his good boy, who he's sitting next to, but when he sat down, he sat down and he doesn't. And that was it. There's nothing else. And as Chaim Moshe mentioned, his work ethic was the same. Because he was an all around fellow. He didn't only emulate Rashi Yeshivas, he emulated the good in Balabatim. And when you go to work, it's true every word that Chaim Moshe said. He couldn't tell time, he couldn't tell you what time it was. But he knew when to leave the house to be there on time. He factored in. He walked, he walked. He walked all these places. He walked to Dach and he walked to the Hebrew Living Center and he walked home. Winter, summer, he went there on time. He never came late. Because he emulated those people that he looked up at. And these people hush the Bala Bakim and they come to work and they work and he does the same thing. <coughs> Friday night he would leave the meal early because of his Savon. He has to be a father Savon. He has to make sure it runs. He he is the one that, that does all these things. He's the one that sets it up and wants to shop and the prizes. The Medish. Last week's Pasha. Medish of Pinchas. Medish of Pinchas. Medish of Pinchas begins and says, the marriage begins. about finding a substitute after he passes on. So the Medrash, Mara, why did Mosh Mena Punta be here look to ask for a replacement? The Medrash, I'm going to paraphrase it, said after he saw the Mosh Salafchot ask for their Yerusha, so he said, if girls are going to Yasha from the father, then my, my son should Yasha me. Only I call this ball from the Tayyah Tayyah Tayyah. Your sons were sitting. They weren't I said, but I didn't expect them they should become an Indian daughter. Okay? So now with Yeshua. Yeshua is a study in himself, but we're just going to learn this part of Yeshua's life. Stay the medicine as well. Harbe Shalsecha. Yeshua is a big Mashalas for you. The Harbe Chalak of Chalkabot. He gave you honor. He looked up to you. He used to come early and stay late in the base medish. He straightened out the chairs. This is like a reading straight out of Moshe's book. And when you have to, Friday, the table clothes, lots of showers, you go in, and wash. Not because it's his job, because it's in the show. So you fold the talais, and you take care of this. And the other ones are going to do it. Everybody knows it, with the pashis, with everything. You do what you have to do with Spanish. How you do who shall say, 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 Therefore, he earned to be the Mishamas for Claudius. A leader Claudius, a Mishamas for Claudius. 
And therefore, if he's Mishalis, then he becomes, he earns, he earned his mantle, his mantle of leadership to be Mishalis. This is straight out of Moshe's book. And I would like to share with you, again, so Moshe alluded to it. I'll tell you Moshe's name there. Moshe's name there to two people. Both of them are my mother, most of them will be well, her relatives. Israel was her oldest brother-in-law, who was murdered in the war. It was so large man, the oldest son of the Barb's Alman. And the other one was Moishala. Moishala was a younger brother of hers, one of those children killed by the Nazis who I much related to. And he's named after that. Now, I just want to say this parenthetically. You know, Moishi left the world young. And people are naming and so on. It's an altar of people that went al Kiddush Hashem, Harugi Malthus. There's no Indian for that, not the name. So we have no regret about that. But I just want to share you this book about my shred as a friend of Rocha. There's an episode about this Moishi, about this little kid. It's a of my I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but it's the men who were married in a Chof Thomas last week, the outside. The women were by themselves until they were married, all of them, mothers and children, Zion L. The fear that lay ahead was palpable. Can you imagine all the women and tells all by themselves? Over the next few weeks, mothers tried to care for their children each day, speculating it would be their last. Every time they passed a soldier, they couldn't help but wonder if he might shoot them for no reason. Finally, the day the old field came on the 7th of June. The women and the children were rounded up and all knew that they, that they would soon be killed. Some of the older girls had managed to escape and would eventually survive. Those are the wives of the Rashi Shiva, so they would be well. But the younger children all walked to their final destination. Moisha lived the 12-year-old brother of Rebbe since Shoshana Gifta was among them. Suddenly, he began to grab Sidure, Tefillin, and other sacred articles. He piled them all on top of one another and tried mightily to lift them. The beautiful child looked as if he were carrying the world on his shoulders, and maybe he was. Those who saw him asked him, what is he trying to do? And which answered, I'm just a young boy. What mitzvahs do I have? I haven't managed to learn much of Chumash, Krishna, I said, Amara. I cannot even be counted with a min, and I never had a chance to wait for him. So I just wanted to take all of these mitzvahs of death with me. This is what is He died, who? He did not start on For the schad that he was in, the shamas, the oil, every time, the svarim, the masaloys, everything. This, he was macabre, the Yerusha, seemingly. And this should be the schools that he's going for the longest. <coughs> this past week, I got a Malia, I got a Mishabarech, and I realized it was the last time I'm going to make a Mishabarech in life. And those that were here saw that I had difficulty saying a Mishabarech for Chayla. Now I'm going to divulge what, what was so difficult. Not the first time that I said a Mishabarech for Malaysia. And I wasn't counting on him leaving the world in three days. I'll tell you why. Moshe is the one that put all those stickers and all the chamashim and all the remarks. No one asked him to do it. It was part of his Mingma Shaman's clan. So next time you get a such a city, take a look how he centered it, how it's straight. It's not done. You would never believe it's done by a special child. It looks like it was done by a graphic artist. Perfect. But I took a look at that sticker. <laughs> And it should be as was fair for all the Misha Bayers for Harlem that will be said. We're going to get to that soon again. He's a Hoyler. Why she asked for? Why she had a love fest with his film? Why she and his film were inseparable? This is another one I ask him. If I ask you today, where is your film? Some people have it in the shoe, some people have it in the car, some people have it in the business, 
Some people don't even know where it is. Not once I misplaced it. They're alive. If it was Gamach, they're alive to somebody else. A Moshe never parted with his Torah. We mentioned before, he worked, he went to Tarche, from Tarche, he went to the Hebrew Living Center, but he started out not being a shul over here. He did live over here. Tomorrow he's coming back to the shul. There's a whole cabinet over there full of Talis and Tum. Moshe carried the boys too. They carried the Tum. So if he went to Tarche, he took him to Tarche. After Tarche, he took the Hebrew Living Center. One night in the winter time, he was standing on Beach 9th and Central Avenue, and he started crying. There was a blizzard snowing, and he started crying. And a woman noticed him crying. He said, what are you crying? He said, I left my children at work. And when I walked back, I knew had to walk back. It just came in this freezing cold. This lady gave her a ride back and forth. He didn't say, you know what? I'm going to borrow something tomorrow. I'll pick it up, I'll get it right back later, like, oh, he just found he was this tone. He and his tone inseparable. When he had to go to the hospital, he lately became petrified about going to the hospital. The only way the Reverend said to the son, you're not staying overnight, is we're not taking your tone. You take your tone. On one such occasion, they changed the rules on us, and you have to stay overnight. And the first thing he said was, where is my tone? And that was a time when Hindi texted Chaim Mashiach. And we had to get through into him. And that's, he woke up. He woke up and immediately put on his film, not realizing that he'd be going to have a seizure afterwards. And who knows when he would have had either the wherewithal or the sable to say Krishna with him. And this happened more than once. Like Canada, he would wake up very early and say, I want to dab or not. Boys used to work. I want to dab or not. So you have to dab. Oh, you're going to voice I think. But when I tell you now, it's unbelievable. Oh, not shy. Not shy. This morning, his material was about 5 to 1. The Shiyak here, according to the Moish, is about 5, 5 or 5 or something like that. Moish, he was so weak that in case he wanted to say something to anybody, he had to put your ear to it, his hand didn't move. And he was within 20 minutes of his material. But his tefillin was put on. His tefillin was put on. He was too weak to say Krishna. But if you haven't been by a petira, you say Krishna with the barman or with the goises. And as Krishna was recited again and again. And in one of those recitations, or maybe two of them, he had his tefillin on. Then about five after five, he put up his right hand to take off his tefillin. And that one was taken off before him. Within 15 minutes, he left the world. <laughs> you were asking something like this. So I want to tell you another secret. I told Hope Gimel Thomas, this was last year's day, he had the operation. What do you do? What do you do? The Hindu, the doctor, says, I'm not interested. There's nothing to do. And we couldn't. After we went to Mount Sinai, he wouldn't look at it. After they got, we had so much pressure on the doctors. Look at it, Hope, not look at it. One day he called to apologize why he's not looking. That's as close as he got to, to reference the horizon. He's going to tell him why not. So what do you do? You come out. And you tell the other one, ask for the doubt. And everybody now. We're going to get to that soon. Everybody now. And I must tell you, I went and I bought a new pair of children. Who did it? Not that he didn't have a good thing. was checked and everything else. That was the reason I said, they're playing the town. And I'm going to play the town. He loved his parents a lot. He loved them. And the positive sense, the mind year we are made happy, we made the day. Who stayed to say Lord, this is Lord? They say it every day, twice a day. Don't say, don't say the mind year we are made My friends, he lived an awful year. I can't tell you who this. I can't tell you the Tura. I can't tell you the Sodom of the Tzibur. Or all of the above. All of the above. But he took care of his children. And when you take care of your tefillin, the tefillin takes care of you. And within 15 minutes of his material, he was wearing his beloved tefillin. Oh, you Cotton chemise. Cotton chemise. Oh, yeah.
say, you say, and holler, Oid Ha, Kiyali Soli, the Fatih Lin Shuha. Ever Mahasa Voyu, Hosu Rishpina, Pais Hashem, Hosu Rishpina, and the first man in you, and the Hayyam Osha, Osha Hashem, the Gilo Nesu Hawa. Let's go over the whole thing. Oid Ha, what's my door? I'm going to thank you, Akkad Ha, Kiyali Soli, because you answered me. Yes. Before. He gave me the sureness. I went through a difficult period. I doubted. I asked everybody to doubt him. Can you help me? And you were a savior for me. So the cash is every morning. We doubt him again and again. For a lonely day in the soil. We ask our college boss, please, don't test me. Don't try me out. And as we said in the beginning, nobody wants me to say Everybody likes to visit Saracha. No one likes to be visited with birds. But we hear something else. This possibly is telling us something which is like a soy by a soy. And everybody has to know this. And if there's anything that we could share with you, that everyone's an eye, there's one reason I don't want anybody else to speak. Because this is not about the rabbits and an eye. This is about Moishi and Claudia as well. Because he bonded with everybody. You could have high, you could have shaken. Mm -hmm. I have to share with you the following. And it's painful, but I gotta share it with you. Oitcha kan Yisoni. We thank Hakadosh Baruch Hu for the Nesoyness. He kalal Yisrael. There is no such a thing as a burden. The Rebbeinu Shlomo does not burden people. He has absolutely no purpose to burden people. The Rebbeinu Shlomo is molei toiv. With Moishi sitting in the next room, I was in the same room with him, him and I was saying, Moi the Manash the Mosha, I told him, I came to the room, I told him, 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 I told Yes, somebody hired me to do it. Can't complain. You never complain. You can't complain. You get up in the morning, boy, darling, I'm not complaining, I'm not complaining about this, and you have no money, I have this, and that guilt. Complaining about it. There's so much to be thankful for. To the boy, Nishalai Ram doesn't make burdens. He makes challenges. You know what a challenge is? As soon as coming to the Olympics, oh, there's going to be challenges. One race, two races, decathlons, ten, ten races, relay races, everything together. And then there's going to be on a hundredth of a mile, a hundredth of a second, a lot of And then whoever wins, they're going to raise a flag, and everybody's going to stand there and salute for the country. You got the gold, only one person gets the gold, and maybe for a hundredth of a second, the other guy's going to get the silver. But the British one doesn't work like that. Everybody gets the gold. Every mile. It's challenges. We come on this world, and we have races. We have Olympics. Sometimes it's refuels, sometimes it's Kanosa, sometimes it's Nachas. Sometimes you're in it by yourself, sometimes you're in it with everybody else. It's not, it's not burdens, it's challenges. We're living in a world, my good friends, everything is a burden. A sick child is a burden. Not only a sick child is a burden, a healthy child is a burden. Little children are burdens too. Tie down, can't go on vacation, can't go shopping. This costs more money, that costs my some burdens. And it's getting worse and worse. I got news for you. Most of the people here are in the baby boys. We are burdens. We are burdens to those children that we think are burdens. They're looking at us. They are burdens. I'm going to be tied down. They're going to cost money too. You know something, the country's going bankrupt because we're all burdens. And all the doctors look at us as burdens. Burdens. A year ago, he says, two months, period. Maximum. That was only the beginning. January 15th, Moishi was on a respirator. Do you know that? January 15th. And there was a from year to the head of the ICU in Mount Sinai. The Cadillac of hospitals in the world. You can't ask for more. You need to start with so and so. You call him, he'll call him, he'll call this, somebody on the board, and then you're going to get into the ICU. 
he wanted I should sign a DNR. You know that? This is January 15th. And two from doctors came to visit and they read their clothes. And they saw what's going on there a bit more like this. This was just from kind of decent, but from me. He gave in to them that they should teach him what to do, and that's why he's here today. They saved his life. They're going to kill him. They're going to kill him. That's all he, the first knock off. From that ICU, he had, he got off a respirator. He got off a respirator. And that doctor is one of the doctors. How do we get the rabbi to sign a DNR? He said, you're crazy. You're going to sign a DNR? The roof is going to come over before he signs a DNR. Ten days later, ten days later, January 25th, Rosh Chodesh Shabbat, Moishe was discharged. Not because he had a full shrine. Moishe wanted to get out of there. Ta, I got to get out. Get me out, Moishe, I'll get you out. Ta, when is Alvi coming? He promised him a new, I told the ambulance. This is one of Moishe's big bells. You have a big Moishe, you're coming out. He said, what you need me? What you need me? What you need me? And the two doctors over there, there's no reason to send him out. He got 24 to 48 hours. Do you hear what's going on? This is January 15th, Rosh Chodesh Shabbat. And the only reason I got them out of there, I said, listen to me. You know the end game, and I know the end game. By the way, we all have the same end game. You know that. So I tell the doctor, you know the end game, and I own the end game. So what is it about you? The end game is in my house. Why does it have to be over here? OK. So they agreed. But without any prescriptions. You're sure. You're sure. It's the end. It's why I'm making prescriptions. And then a bunch of Allah came to the house with a bush. They all done. And I'm very careful. People don't mention anybody. They don't mention some people. The truth is, as we're talking now, we're all on the Shoma. Everybody pitched in whatever they could. If you talk about a goof, that's the Shoma. There's the head, there's the eyes, there's the fingers, there's the this. Nobody wants to move the finger, nobody wants to move the tooth. It doesn't make a difference, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, it doesn't make a difference. Everybody pitched them whatever they could. And 48 hours later, I'm telling you, the rabbits in the night, and those that knew were counting the hours. <coughs> and 48 hours later was the first cousins. Whoever was there, you could feel the shit. <laughs> 48 hours, it's supposed to be gone. It's insane, more. And they were being so bad, and he, at first he's sitting, he's so shrach, and then afterwards he starts to explain, he just wakes up this whole thing. And this happened again, and again, and again, and then before the house, 12 days before the house, something else seriously happened. Then the boy in the shleim, again, the house boy, the two boy, his boy, the boy, he had a full shleim. Friday, he was brought out of the hospital right before Shabbos. Shabbos, he's standing over here, Yamoit, one of his best Yamoits. And then Monday night, he's singing by the Chol. Baruch Tayin Amis. Chasodim, pouring Chasodim. Chasodim. But let me just bring this to everybody's attention. It's not good out there. I'm going to tell you a quick, quick, quick word, because you'll be able to see how this. Why says Kaif should be grateful again? Good doctors should go to Gan. Now, there are a lot of good doctors around here. And you might be offended. But I got some better doctors, and they know the Gemara too little better than us. The Raman was a doctor, the Ramban was a doctor, the Ramban was a doctor, the Swan was a doctor. It seems like it was a professional choice by all of the do you leave a shot. So what's the Pshat? Kaif should be grateful again. So I want to tell you the Pshat. I think it's Pshat Pshat, it's very important. And the answer is the following. My friend, the Zechariah of Rocha, once told somebody who was a lawyer. He told him there's a difference between a lawyer being created in the Torah or an entire that practices law. It depends what your Mitzvah is. You say for Yoyin in the beginning, the Rabbi Chai will ask Yoyin, where are you from? What do you do? And everything else. And he answers them, Ivri Anoichi, Ves Elakim Aniyore. The good doctors that they're talking about, that they're more talking about, are doctors that know the profession, that read the textbook. And on January 15th, the Moishi's pressure is falling. 
He's not putting out words and everything else. The textbook says you move a mile. That's what nothing to talk about. You sign the PNR and deduct the mine. It's costing too much money for those exchange for How much it cost it? It's a burden. It's a burden. But a fruity, that's a Jewish mine. Another part too much there. But to then I'm Yaldis S of the Kim at Fina and Fina Gibbon. Says the Shreza friend of Rocha. You can rationalize anything. Hitler rationalized the Aryan race, the Jews are parasites. You can rationalize abortion, first term, second term, You can rationalize anything. What stops the person? But it always has to be a mind. My friends, from here on in, with what's going on in the country, the world burdens, you look for your Shemaya. And just because a person has a reputation as a good doctor or a big hospital, or even if he wears a yarmulke, it doesn't mean he has your Shemaya. That's one of the big Musa houses over here. And that's a chassadim that the bunch of showed us over here that I wanted to share with everybody. And as we mentioned before, you got a Yeshua. Why? Because everybody chipped in together. The former family, the greater family, everybody dominant. I've been told from the Nalim Rashi Shiva that has been so many tefillahs said from one person like from which. And obviously, that's what, that's what made the Russian. Even Ma'asu Ha'oidim Ho'is of the Rosh Pinam. That's Kota Sheva Ha'bura. Moishi. I mentioned before, the real intelligence. He was a graduate of, I think it was called Gerano or something, in Monson. And there he came here, and here he went to Hush a little bit. After he graduated Hush, he went to the public school. One time I was with the great parents of the Lawrence public school system with four boys. And then things started changing. Dachatari gave him opportunities to learn. That's what he made us see him and say that Moyut did more than one Chavrusa. I don't know how much he retained, but what difference does it make? He was a Hoylach. He was a Hoylach. He was a Hoylach. He was a Hoylach. Then after he went to camp, he went to Aachen, he became the director, he became the head counselor. He became a person. This is Evan Masa I remember when Hamash was born. He said four and a half years. We took him to a babysitter, like people drop over a babysitter. And they told us, no one ever bring him back again. He was born with a lady in the eye. I can tell you a lot of stories about that. I don't know about this. He was not, no one ever knew it. His ears stuck out. He was born with iron creases in his ears. He had two operations for that. This goes to all your parents. You have a child that's not good looking, low intelligent, he was hyperactive as a kid. Any good time he used to want to get up, he used to run around the table 10 times, 20 times without catching his breath. And he used to go to Moshe the Parker, as Moshe the Parker. And he would do this again and again and again. Many parents look at this as burdens, and they write them off. They write these kids off. Evan Maasa, why do you say the Rosh Pino? Look how we're talking about it in the Shoma. In the Shoma Torah, in the Shoma Torah, how much there is to learn from him. This is from the Rabbi Nishla. To be part of such a Kehillah, to be part of such a Tzibar, I still can't get over the people that I hear, which the Rebbe would see it too. It's unbelievable how many people he touched, maybe how many people he broke their hearts. I want to just share with you a little story. Iksav Saifa, Ben Haqsam Saifa, was sick when he was six years old. The doctors gave up on him. Atkarikah, the Chavakadisha came, and they put him on the floor already, and they lit two candles behind his head. <coughs> Those two candles are still in the Seufa Mishpacha. They are lawyer of Shlita, Yerchon Seufa, has those candles. And the Chassam Seufa went into another room, and he doubted, he doubted for the health and for longevity of his son, of Rosh Shmuel Ben Yomim. He's called Yemen Bolf. And he came out, and his German Yiddish, he said, he doesn't understand how come they have him on the floor with the two candles. I, I beseeched and I received 50 years. And everybody knows. 
some ciphers lift at 56. And what he would say is just when my pen learned how to write, it's stopping. Unbelievable. For Chizuk, you could hire to thank everybody. My good friends, it's the Tzilis. It's the Chassan. It's the Chassan Tzibur. It's the way. Let alone everybody. We pulled off a year. A year plus. In the same yoyner. Yoyner tells the Rabbi Chaybu, so uni, vitibun and yoyam, pick me up and throw me into the sea. And all the common will say, I'll pick you up. See, throw me into the sea. The Tarot says, I don't even know how precious one minute is. Don't just throw me. Pick me up. Maybe I can say something. I can hear a true. Another second on this world. Boy, she's all the 15 minutes had him putting on film in his mother of Moses Mishiach here. That he himself knew what he was doing, he took it off. Who knows else what was going on in his mind? <coughs> this is this Chosat Sibur that we're facing here. And what everybody did, the Chesed is not Shaykh. People that hear about it, not Shaykh, each individual, I'm not going to mention it. Children, everybody, the cards. One kid wrote a card from camp. Moishi, I remember you coming to Coco and you down brochus with Kavana. That's Kat Shabakabura. Everybody, all the Tfilis. This is what gave him the year. Massive what this year was as in the Scarantino. <coughs> this happened two days after my mother Allah showed you outside. This is Chavz Dayan Shvat, and this is February 20th. He came home, Rosh Chodesh Shvat, okay? This is way past 48 hours. Dear Dr. Markov and Chuck, I would like to first thank you and your staff for your care. Okay, I'm attaching an article. They wrote an article about it, comes it's. You'll be happy to know that while is still, is still very sick, he's doing remarkably well. Every day he gets out of bed and walks around for a bit. He has many visitors who come by every day, lift up his spirits. Today we had the outside death anniversary for my grandmother. And so I was very close to my grandmother, and he was in the hospital, and he kept talking about the old time. He kept talking about my shreds, your time. He kept talking about my mother's your time. And for my mother's your time, he said he's going to make a seal. And he did. And that's another Musa Haskell. Anytime somebody's in the hospital, you talk about the future. You give them something to look forward to. We were talking to Moish again about being by the home that it would come. That's one of the ways. I think it's the secret, that's the duo. These are all the different things. <coughs> Since he's been home, despite his weakness, he studied every day and accomplished what he wanted, which is very important. Today, with hospice and palliative care, after the person gets diagnosed, cheaper than treating them, they give you a fishing rod and a six pack of beer, and you take the high of the You understand? So that's for them, is quality of life. To learn another message, to, to learn something else, to put on film another day, that's not. And then she writes about it. He finished it. He got up at the outside dinner to make a special blessing by finishing the section. That is all part of what's going on. This is the There's no words to describe it. As we said, we put our year. Which is the day we're talking about? That's the day, the designated day. There's Yoy Machra. Yoy Machra is the last day of a person's life. Tishak is Kol Hashemayah Yitzchak, the Yisori made us it. It's true, it's sad, and we make a Boruch Dayanavis. But as we said, the Dayanavis, there's so much there. There's so much there. In this race, there was a relay race, so many people participated. So Tishak, we are Machra. We look at us in the Boi Nishaloy Lom. We did a job. We really did a job. Everybody did what they could. The Boi Nishaloy Lom asked him. He gave him another year. And from the first time, the first operation, it's four years. How could anybody complain? Just say thank you. And the dynamics, the dynamics knows what it is, but we can all understand it with them. In conclusion, I'm not going to make a kickoff on the Buddha's Eichel Moshim. I mentioned a lot of things that everybody can learn from the Kodesh of the He was nifted without a wife. He was nifted without children. 
a statement to move just like that. The people here, the testimony that he touched, if not broke, a lot of lives about the news. There's so much that we could not have. There's Kapnish and Mahabura. There's big Neshama, but all Neshamas are big. If each of you want to take something, you don't have to tell me what it is. You have to explain it in his name. I'm hoping that they did so much. That would be the greatest. Queen is with us and not getting angry. Or tomorrow, she was. The last thing, I hope I can tell Boyd she's not lobbying. One of his big things which encouraged so much was he used to say, Yah, Boyd. Boyd shows he's kind. Now it's your turn. All of these people. I asked you to say Yahweh. When we came from the outside, and heard why she said Yahweh, didn't understand what is going on in there. And he said Yahweh for our mitzvahs, he said Yahweh for our troops, and he made sure they get paid. And then I told you he didn't know the difference between a five dollar bill and a fifty dollar bill. But he made sure they collect his money. Well, he says he's tired. Now you go to the keys and I call him. <laughs> You tell the boy the shmuel of Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. The boy the shmuel of get off, get up. The key said, "There's so much sorrow here. There's so much. Everybody needs so much. Everybody was so nice to you. And you were happy and you touched everybody. Ask the boy the shmuel of get up. The key said, "Din." I get to the key said, "Oh, I was." I'm going to say what's going to happen now. We're going now to Beis HaChaim. And I find myself in a foyer as a relative. I'm going to share with you all of this. There's a Chabura that I have to do Beis HaChaim. My sheet there is. It's time. It's going to be the first Matsaiba there. <laughs> it's not the first one very there. There is a navel there, and that makes a very big difference. But I feel not right, as I mentioned to you before, that being a rough, part of my achrais is to teach. And you're entitled to watch what the rough does and doesn't do. To learn from it, fight. There happens to be a locha. It's a machine I indulged at the end. The Ramah says the following. And I had a discussion this morning with my wife of Shlita was sitting here. The woman that I remember, the one from again, the husband of the Torah, the Torah I had Shimush, Rav Muhammad Lachan, for his life as well, the square of of Nightfloss, and I remember going with him to the house where the child was lifted. And when Aisha was mentioned to the father, he says, you didn't go out to the base of home, did you? He said, no, I didn't. There's a law that parents, by the way, this base of home is going to follow them in the home. That's pretty much established not in America. There's a lot of home that are made in the USA. And one of the analogies is not women don't go out. So the Levinson and the girls are not going out. The sisters are not going out. Whatever closure means, you'll find out from a psychologist <coughs> what that means. To say goodbye whenever Allah says to say goodbye. So that's one analogy. The other analogy is, as we said over here, Ramon, the same Ramon that tells us that to be proud of the nine days, the same Ramon. He says that for a first child, the father doesn't go out to the cemetery. There are shah heads unless there was a miscarriage. So I'm going out because of the shach's sack. Okay, so another halach. And the Bunshim should help. The boy should be a schus for everybody. And whatever you could learn, and the one of his halachas, that should be a schus for him too. Allah Hashem Dima Rakapon, and Bilam Rabbis Netzach, and the other I'm going to ask of Shlemid Dax, who gave Moi Shishiyas by just speaking to him on the telephone, that he should say to him over here.
מלא רחמים, שייכים ומרימים. אמצי מנוחה נכון על כנפי השכינה ומאלוהיס קדושים וטהרים כי זו ירקיה מסעירים אז נשמס ישראל מוישה אמרנו רב יעקב שוחלך ליהוי לומר מעבור של כלי נדר, תאים צדוקו, ביד הסטורס נשמו סוי, בגן הידן תהא מנוחו סוי, לוחם בעל הרחמים, יאז תראיו בסייסר, אמן. Washington Cemetery on Dean's World Hall in New Jersey.